Hey guys, this is Andre, a certified translator and a real estate concierge based in Minsk but operating across Belarus. And the regular channel viewers can recognize this place, the embankment, where it kind of all started many years back, maybe a couple of lives back in the pandemic. As tourism had its natural death caused by the pandemic and the relocation business sprung up. For the last three years, I've been relocating people to Belarus. Over the last uh, year plus, there has been a problem about wiring money to Belarus. Wiring meaning in all ways, Western Union and uh, some conventional guys are gone. Some are still working. I'll uh, put the working uh, money sending techniques into the video description. The video today is about how to bank transfer money to Belarus. You know, this kind of Western, safe, secure, easy to understand, easy to execute, and not losing too much money in between kind of wiring. It's quite clear that most of the banks are mm, not doing dollar wires. Uh, there is a rumor that these guys do, and these guys are owned by guys from this country and Austrian bank mama, Georgian bank mama. We're gonna run top five banks that still do some kind of transfers and try and voice some solutions about how to get the goddamn money here to buy a property. Let me remind you that you can bring in the pocket less than $10,000 and not fill any forms and more than $10,000 and fill the form that it's in your pocket. There's nothing like tragic about filling the form. There's nothing complicated. TRP form is much more complicated, so uh, it's not a problem to get cash in. But if you're a bank kind of guy, let's see what works for this purpose. Thank you for watching the channel. Well, guys, one of the basic things to keep in mind, basically two, let's uh, imagine a standard scenario. We have a foreign guy here with a foreign car looking to transfer his foreign money to buy some substantial thing, some property. And the... Uh, uh, general things to keep in mind are there are just a couple of banks that don't charge commission for withdrawals from their ATMs. Most of them charge commission for withdrawals from the operators. So depending on your bank limits, depending on the local bank, sanctioned or not, with limits or not, this may be a very limited option to get your money. So withdrawals may be regular over long term, like a couple of weeks and like not super efficient thing. Now, it's hard to foresee which way the sanctions will turn that further, but uh, and until quite recently, uh, the withdrawal uh, policy for the foreigners with hard currency sitting on their account was a bit steep. You couldn't withdraw more than ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars per week, per two weeks, per month. I understand most of these banks have cut these limitations, but this may or may not come up somewhere soon. So this is something you have to keep in mind too if you're dealing with the banks. Oh, by the way, last but not least, and kind of funny, uh, on top of being a bank with a very handy app, uh, the new one is not as good as the old one, maybe I'm not just used to it. The Alpha Bank uh, only opens up an account for people who work here, who study here, or my clients that I relocate. This is not an official collaboration, they just recognize my service contract, which is an official service contract for a ground to open up an account. Essentially, we already have our first reply from the Alpha. You can send a Chinese Yuan, converting it in your origin bank in the United States. Theoretically, we were sending money from the United States. And the Transit Chinese Bank is not meant to charge any commission. Which is kind of sweet, because the incoming Chinese Yuan transfer isn't commissioned either by the Alpha. So it's just about the uh, dollar to Yuan swap in America and the backward swap here, because obviously who wants a pack of Yuan bills on the table on the deal day? Let's check the other banks. So here we are, guys. That's BSB Bank. Used to be Bell Swiss. Not sure how Swiss it is, but it's definitely kind of positive. Firstly, the security people were okay, allowing me to film myself inside the public reception zone, which is kind of sweet. Secondly, they are very sweet about euro transfers. They have a Polish euro transit bank, and you lose 2% in the end uh, with some tr transit bank commissions that may or may not occur, like not more than 100 euro, but general idea is in your US bank or in Europe you will convert your money to euro and send it to the euro account at the BSB which is not a problem to kickstart even for a foreigner 
100 euro commission to start the, the account and some uh, couple of bucks to expedite the card production. And then your card comes out and you can do the card to card if your bank allows that. Some Westerners tell me their bank and the banks do not allow that kind of transfer. Or the SWIFT with the IBAN and all the other things which are printed out to you or you can download from the website. By the way, the app is now looking more humane. So if you gave up using BSB at some point, like I did a year ago, once my YouTube money were no longer reaching my US account here, you might restart it and check if the application is even more digestible. It has English version, which is kind of positive. And, and, and that's about it. Well, cheers to the security of the BSB. Oh, the birds are singing. The banks are counting money. Guys, for a quick interlude, I would say I'm kind of uh, having fun when all the hierarchy chain pieces start to work, resolving an off the books issue like a guy walks into a bank with a camera says can i do a vlog like i got some positive uh, consultancy here could i put it on tape and share with, with my clients you start making calls to security guys bosses of bosses and just as the first bosses were clear and i shot my thing and walked away the reception girl said oh, could you please hold for a moment and that's a scary thing when they tell you that at the passport control and they say you know, like our oh, department boss wants to have a word with the smaller boss about what just happened. I said, guys, follow Minsk guide. It's in the video description. So here at MT Bank, the people are courteous enough for this promotional yeah. shot. <laughs> the website of MT Bank has all the Swift countries uh, that are possible for a transfer. And apparently it's like free researchable. You don't have to go to the bank to see if your country is eligible. US is completely a no-no. But all the EU countries work with uh, only Zloty. I don't know how your, let's say, Portuguese, Spanish, French bank will convert your Euro into Zloty to transfer here, but that works. And from Poland, there is a bank there whose name is apparently not so difficult to find out. From Poland, you can send Euro, Zloty, and the Chinese Yuan. By the way, that this very kind banking girl doesn't know the abbreviation for the Chinese Yuan. I'll put it here for the education purpose. Mm -hmm. To take your money out, you don't necessarily have to have a card, in which case you pay less than 100 euro to kickstart an account. The amount will change very soon, I guess. And to use the card account and the online bank further, you'll be paying about 300 euro. Again, that's roughly. It's paid on the day, deal day when you sign a contract with them and you lose 2% when your money hits the account. Withdrawal doesn't have any limits for now and doesn't, doesn't really seem complicated. Well, guys, Belarus Bank is a bit on the sad side here. They don't really give you statistics of where the money is coming from. They can just tell you, ask your bank at home, where do they send the money? And the trend is, unfortunately, with all the sanctions and stuff, that we don't send money to Belarus. We don't know where this is. Oh, Belarus, let us cancel your account or something like this, which happened to my Belgian guy who tried to wire money here for his apartment, which never worked out, but to the better end. So Belarus Bank and its uh, rather tight atmosphere here is a bit depressive, but they charge 1.5 commission, incoming commission. But whether or not this kind of transfer may succeed really depends on your sending bank. Belarus Bank only works with the Polish Zloty and Chinese Yuan, neither Euro nor Dollars. And of course, over 2,000 base units, you'd have to supply the proof of income, details, bank statement or something like this. And you can also kickstart a running account. Uh, in that case, they will charge a certain commission that you will research on your device, with me or without, if we get to have a little apartment hunt here in Minsk. Let's check one of the last banks and see what they have to offer. On second thought, I might try and file an official query with Belarus Bank, like guys, statistically, which banks from the EU do you have money coming in? Because it's such an obvious thing, such an obvious solution for the people, and uh, uh, maybe they can provide a, a list of banks from which they are basically successful accepting money. I don't think it's such a top-end secret information. At the same time, she claims it is. The operator I just talked to in a very 
not very stressed manner in fact, but she was very tight about this being a secret and your homework including addressing your sending bank to ask if they are okay to wire Euro to Belarus. It's complicated. So guys, here at the Parity, Par Paritet Bank, we had a conversation about filming or not filming in the public area. They seem okay as long as I don't shoot other people against their will or the documents. And basically, there are no secrets because there are no international transfers anymore. Just Baltic countries and Austria via the bank that will remain nameless can try and initiate transfers. There can be card-to-card -card transfers as you, if your bank, your sending bank, is supporting the service and some banks just don't do that. Um, so conventional wires basically don't work from the US at all without, with, even with these uh, CNY tricks. Uh, so just Austria and just the Baltic countries, which will not easily allow you to open country uh, an account there just for this operation, as far as I know. If you have a different experience, please let me know. Well, the helpful marketing people, promotion people at the Paritet, told me they are you know, working on creating a new face, so to speak, an image that's always good. And uh, I also talked to the creative uh, crypto people, the official crypto uh, exchangers that are the residents of the high technology park, the White Bird, and a few others, I guess. I'll put the link down below as well, I'm waiting for their positive response and explanation of how a transfer of 100,000 bucks could work here, either from US or Europe. Provisionally, we lose 5%. It works through a week and then you legitimately get your money wired here as long as you have that uh, supporting paper about where the money is coming from, obviously. And it works roughly like this. You initiate a 100,000 wire a purchase of crypto. The crypto goes to the agent's wallet or account. It's a foreign agent company that facilitates between here and there. They buy, they buy, the, they buy the USDT actually for you and um, send it here to Belarus. The agent wires the USDT to a local agent's account in rubles. Now again, this may or may not prove right, if I got it right as I was scribbling down at the table. The agent has his account in Belarus, it gets uh, wired here and then exchanged here and gets into your account in rubles or in euro. We'll clarify that part as well. And once you get that part in euro, it's better, or in US dollars, it's uh, money ready for the deal. And if that's in rubles, well, there's another conversion and commission loss, and we'll try to estimate how much you'll lose from 100,000. So I'm not sure if I'll go to Prior Bank, because that one requires you to have 20,000 ruble hostage account that you can't, can't use, basically. I'm not sure about the right term for that account. For me, basically, it's the money you can't use, so they hold it until you do your things. 20,000 rubles is a bit steep for that. Even for the resident, uh, for the country's non-resident, for the TRP holder here, who already has an account with Prior, they still demand this uh, 10, 000, uh, 20,000 ruble account trick, which is not really human. I guess that leaves us with two more banks that were referred to us, uh, Technobank and BTA. BTA is Kazakhstani bank, also BNB by the way, it has some Georgian roots, so we'll try and see how helpful it may be, but I think the scenario is about the same, they just don't know until you check with your sending bank and they confirm. I guess after all, I'll venture a trip to the BNB, because all the stories are it's a Georgian owned bank, they are okay with foreign things. Uh, as far as we checked last time with an EU buyer, he couldn't have wired his Georgian money here because that was not the bank that, that they could handle a transfer from. So that's not really useful offhand, but I'll just go back there and double check again and see if that works with dollars or with euro. As for BNB Bank, it's short for Belaruski Narodny Bank. That doesn't translate, but generally means people's bank. Not, nothing to do with, with uh, state banks or anything. Uh, everybody kind of praises their host company in Georgia, which seems to have nothing to do with their efficiency, swift-wise. But they had somewhat good news today. 
The BNB guys don't accept anything from the US, no tricks with Chinese yuan or anything, but they do accept money from Europe. No transfers from the UK, but they can do transfers from Germany, and there's Commerce Bank and Deutsche Bank that do that. They can do money from Austria, Raffaisen, Estre or Estrel, and also Deutsche Bank AG. And it costs 50 to 250 rubles plus uh, they give you a card to kickstart an account for the purpose we have just outlined, wiring a significant amount of money to uh, buy yourself a property. And that's one of the only banks actually claiming to be doing SWIFT transfers, so remember the abbreviation and you'll pinpoint them on the map. Let's see the rest of the, the range. Here at the BTA Bank, I'm kind of shocked because they say, yeah, we, got, we are getting money from the USA, USA, we're getting money from the EU, like 100,000, not a problem, as long as you have the income uh, statement, income proof statement, like bank statement of your salary money, got going in some deal of some kind, which got you all this money. So I'm, I'm positively shocked, just $70 or 70 euro to kickstart an account. Uh, it's free of charge if you don't need a card. The 70 is for the basic card plan. And basically, that's it, essentially. And 1.5% commission is chipped once they top your account with your money. That's about it. So, uh, an American, in theory, would have to fill the favorite W94 because they have this international agreement where they smoke all Americans trying to hide money from Uncle Sam, otherwise it works. So BTA is the answer if you do have your bank statement, that is. Now this morning I got a call from the yesterday's crypto bank guys. They said that no, the crypto bank, the official HTTP uh, business, doesn't really work the way they outlined it to me yesterday, which sucks because I really took note yesterday and I put it all on the tape. So there are several crypto ways that we will elaborate on separately, on a separate note, and probably that's going to be on a paid consultancy basis, should you be interested in that. It's simple, it works. Uh, most of the flats that were purchased in Minsk by my clients were actually b b purchased with crypto option. And uh, uh, don't forget to help the channel if you might. Five to ten dollar donations are really helpful, like a small financial support, nothing inconsiderable or inconvenient, I hope, and uh, a sign for me to like a thumb up to continue to do what I'm doing here on the internet. Again, thank you very much, guys. Uh, many thanks to the patrons, existing helpers, and uh, see you in Minsk at some point. Cheers.